Welcome to Dot Hoops, where we dive deep into the NBA's hottest topics. Today, we're examining the impressive synergy between Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, and how this duo is transforming the Dallas Mavericks into one of the most explosive teams in the league, creating havoc for defenses across the league. Sends the ball missing, and Dallas with a long rebound, and they've got George back. When Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving first teamed up, there was a chorus of skepticism. Critics questioned their compatibility, citing concerns that both stars needed the ball to be effective. The 2022-23 season proved to be a challenging one for the Dallas Mavericks, largely due to a spate of injuries that severely impacted the team's performance. After acquiring Kyrie Irving midseason, the Mavericks' hopes for a playoff berth were dashed as both Irving and the team's star, Luka Doncic, struggled with health issues following the NBA All-Star break. Doncic suffered from a lingering left quad injury while Irving faced challenges with plantar fasciitis. These injuries undermined their ability to play consistently. Moreover, the team's overall strategic execution, particularly on defense, was lacking. The Mavericks often found themselves unable to secure wins in critical moments of the game, commonly referred to as clutch situations, due to both a flawed roster and insufficient defensive play. This issue was compounded by the fact that Doncic and Irving were still in the early phases of developing on-court chemistry, which hindered their offensive capabilities. Without a strong offensive performance to counterbalance their defensive shortcomings, the Mavericks frequently fell short. As the season neared its end and the Mavericks found themselves out of contention for even a play-in spot, the decision was made to deliberately lose the final two games. This strategic choice to tank was aimed at improving their position for future draft picks, but led to a disciplinary response from the NBA, a hefty fine of $750,000. Ultimately, the Mavericks concluded their tumultuous season with a disappointing record of 38 wins and 44 losses. However, what we're witnessing this season is a remarkable display of offensive synergy that's proving the doubters wrong. The Dallas Mavericks finished the regular season with a 50-32 record and secured the fifth seed in the Western Conference playoffs. Kyrie Irving, a storied point guard whose career began with a standout season at Duke University, entered the NBA as the first overall draft pick in the 2011 NBA draft by the Cleveland Cavaliers. His time in Cleveland was marked by spectacular gameplay, culminating in a 2016 NBA championship where he played a crucial role alongside LeBron James. After his stint with the Cavaliers, Irving moved to the Boston Celtics and later the Brooklyn Nets, where he continued to showcase his skills as a premier scorer and ball handler, with many considering Kyrie the greatest ball handler of all time. Irving on the drive, a pullback inside the arc junction. Irving the crossover against Bonga. Boy, somehow kept his pivot foot down. There's Kyrie Irving. We're going to count the blues on this play. I mean, <laughs> That's two. And here we go. And it's minutes per game. If you take them off the floor. Traditionally, the Mavericks under Doncic have adopted a slower pace. Enter Kyrie Irving, known for his preference for a faster tempo, and we see a strategic shift. For the first time in the Luka era, Dallas is playing at a pace above the league average. This adjustment isn't solely due to Irving driving to the hoop. It's a collective effort. Doncic has embraced a quicker transition game, looking for quick outlets and propelling the team to capitalize on open floor opportunities. And with that, Luka Doncic did not just have a good season. He had a historic season. This season, Doncic averaged 33 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists, almost a triple-double. To put that in perspective, this kind of stat line has only been achieved twice in NBA history. Once by Michael Jordan, and once by Doncic himself just last year. In 1988-89, Michael Jordan put up a similar stat line. The Chicago Bulls, however, won only 47 games and finished 5th in their division that season. Despite the Bulls' mediocre performance, Jordan was a standout finishing 2nd in the MVP voting. He had already won MVP the previous year, and his team was a mere two wins away from reaching the NBA Finals. Oh, the hook, finger roll 
it's in. Jordan on the move right side against Teagle. All the way to the hoop, shoots it in off the glass. Jordan backs him in the lane, now takes it to the hoop, lays it up. Yes. Good. Takes it across the lane, lefty shot, bank no good. Rebound Michael Jordan. Now the Bulls on the push as Jordan brings it down. Takes it right in the lane to the hoop, kicks for Vincent. Left baseline jumper, good. Three on one break, Michael Jordan, a dish for granted. Horace, a two-hand jail. Four in the clock, Michael in the dry, running hook, rimming good. Backs right back into Jordan, low right against Humphreys. Turnaround jumper, good. Jordan on the drive, down the lane, dish left to Grant to the hoop for the jam. Just picked it up, Jordan has it in the lane, 13 for a tie game. Many have mentioned Doncic's name in MVP discussions, but he has yet to win that award. In the half court, Dallas engineers set plays that cater to Irving's strengths. One effective strategy is a quick give and go with Doncic at the top, allowing Irving to exploit his downhill momentum and exhibit his unmatched finishing abilities. Moreover, Dallas frequently employs corner pin down screens that enable Irving to curl towards the ball and execute on the move. His mastery of the floater makes these plays almost effortlessly successful. Despite these adjustments, the Mavericks' offense remains heavily Doncic-centric, which is to be expected given his stature as one of the best on-ball creators in the league. Their half-court approach features numerous ball screens and a spread pick-and-roll setup where Doncic poses a constant threat. Defensively, opponents are forced to deploy aggressive strategies to prevent him from penetrating the paint. In response, Doncic showcases his playmaking prowess, adeptly navigating through defensive rotations. Offensively, the Mavericks are elite, but questions remain on defense. Under coach Jason Kidd, the Mavericks have historically emphasized an effort-based defense. Remember, this approach catapulted them to the Western Conference Finals in the 2021-22 NBA season thanks to a top-five defensive rating and a strong team buy-in. However, this season points to a different scenario. There's a noticeable shift with the team pouring most of their energy into offense leaving their defensive duties somewhat neglected. Coach Kidd himself has noted that the Mavericks' defensive strategy is heavily influenced by their offensive performance. In his words, if the team scores, they will play defense. If they don't score, then defense becomes secondary. This mindset can be risky. Basketball is a game of balance, and neglecting one end can tilt the scales unfavorably no matter how good the offense is. The solution seems clear but challenging rekindle that defensive fervor. The Mavericks need to reestablish a culture where defensive effort is paramount regardless of their offensive success. This dynamic has posed a critical question for coach Jason Kidd and his staff. How can they maximize Irving's contributions without detracting from Doncic's lead role? The evolving strategy in Dallas not only highlights Irving's adaptability, but also underscores Doncic's growth as a facilitator, promising to pose significant challenges for playoff defenses. Stay tuned to Dot Hoops for more insights into the topics of the day in the NBA. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content. See you there!